Perhaps nothing is more mysterious than consciousness, the condition of being aware that governs our waking lives, the sense of existing in an avatar within a larger, complex and colorful world, all of it rendered through our thoughts and emotions. Even in today's increasingly secular society, consciousness still maintains a magical aspect. Philosopher David Chalmers said that consciousness could be an essential part of the fabric of the universe, like space-time or energy, and that it might be connected to the quantum world or something non-physical. The reason for this abundance in metaphysical interpretation is because we still don't have a grand explanation of consciousness that could satisfy our scientific curiosity. But we're not completely in the dark. We know that our sensory systems send information about the world into our brain, where it's processed by complex layers of neurons. What we don't know is how this processing of information generates a smooth and continuous world picture. In Western culture and philosophy, consciousness was always considered a divine gift bestowed on humans only, that non-human animals are nothing more than unfeeling robots. The prevailing belief among scientists was that consciousness was a recent development in our evolutionary journey. They believe that the first mind sparked into being sometime after our split from chimps and bonobos. Julian Jaynes, a famous psychologist and author, argued that consciousness emerged as a result of the development of language, which allowed us to go into deeper cognitive states capable of constructing worlds based on experience and observation. This collective academic perception has been slowly changing in recent decades, and today we can find new research papers being published at an accelerating rate that would suggest that consciousness is not unique to humans and that most animals are indeed conscious. For instance, African grey parrots have been observed to retain a vocabulary of 1,000 words. One African grey parrot was able to acquire a vast vocabulary that allowed him to describe colors and shapes, as well as the ability to use the word no functionally. The parrot was able to correctly combine these vocalizations to identify, request and refuse more than 30 objects by means of verbal labels. But this was after 26 months of speech training by researchers. And while it is intriguing, it can't be used as evidence for consciousness. As it turns out, parrots aren't the only birds that display conscious behavior. In 2008, researchers performed a test known as the mirror test on a magpie, the first non-mammal to pass such a test. They placed a bright dot on its neck and waited for the bird to look in the mirror. Once it did, it immediately checked its neck. Australian raptors have figured how to use their environment for other purposes. They've been seen to fly bundles of flaming sticks out of forest fires and into neighboring landscapes to flush out prey. Crows have long been known to use tools to solve problems. A crow population in Japan has figured out how to open walnuts using traffic. They drop the nuts in front of cars at intersections and wait for the light to turn red to retrieve them. Crows can remember human faces and even feel affection for people. They call at people they dislike and bring gifts to those they like in the form of buttons or shiny bits of glass. Crows have larger brains relative to other animals, with densely packed neurons. Their brains have larger structures that mostly deal with association and motor learning, which results in complex behavior. While this might not be considered evidence for the existence of consciousness, as no brain scanner can pinpoint its physical origins, however, it might be a hint when an animal's brain closely resembles ours. Unlike mammals who are widely considered to be conscious, birds don't have a cerebral cortex, the place where most complex cognition appears to take place. It seems that birds have evolved different brain structures since our genetic drift some 300 million years ago. But one of those structures appears to be wired like a cerebral cortex. This could mean one of two things. Either consciousness evolved twice across our evolutionary history, or it evolved before birds and mammals went on their separate evolutionary journeys. Either way, it looks like nature can cook waking minds in multiple ways. We last shared a common ancestor with fish some half a billion years ago. Yet fish seem to possess a theory of the mind and the ability to speculate about the mental states of other beings. Some fish are able to remember events as far back as 10 days earlier. Grouper fish have been seen to cooperate with eels to hunt prey in reefs. In a questionable lab experiment, researchers demonstrated that fish can also feel pain. They injected acid into trout lips and watched them thrash their bodies back and forth while hyperventilating. 
The fish stopped once they were given morphine. Some might say that the thrashing of a fish when it's pulled out of the water is a silent scream because the fish believes it has entered a permanent state of extreme suffering. We can go back even further in our evolutionary history and still find hints of consciousness. We shared a common ancestor with wasps some 700 million years ago. Their alien appearance gives us the impression that they're not conscious, but that couldn't be farther from the truth. Some wasps are believed to have evolved large eyes to detect social cues, and some wasp species can remember the faces of individual members of their colony. Wasps display complex behavior as well, just like ants and bees. Ants use their bodies to form bridges that allow their colony to pass from one place to another. Honeybees in labs have learned to recognize abstract concepts, such as similar to, different from, and zero. Honeybees have also been observed to pass on their knowledge to others. Sometimes a new technique to extract nectar introduced by a single bee can transform the entire colony. Despite the fact that a honeybee brain contains only 1 million neurons to our brain's 80 billion or so, they seem to integrate spatial information similar to how our midbrain processes information. Fruit flies have only 250,000 neurons, but they too display complex behavior. In lab experiments, fruit flies have been observed to turn to alcohol in the form of fermenting fruits when they were unable to find mates. Neuroscientist Bjorn Merker believes that when the first mind winked into existence, it faced new challenges whose solution may have required the evolution of consciousness. He suggested that early animal brains had to form an accurate and continuous account of the external world and sync the information that was streaming in. It also needed to correct any errors introduced by its own movement. Merker says that consciousness is just the multi-sensory view from inside this model that has an avatar of the body at its center. The sinking process and the noise from our moving bodies are all filtered out from this conscious view. The wasp, for example, is not aware of its wings moving. It simply wills itself through space. And we don't think about every muscle contraction whenever we decide to go for a walk we simply start walking. If it's true that the first aquatic animal experienced consciousness, it wouldn't have resembled our own. It might have been colorless with clearly defined shapes, or it may have flickered on and off as the situation required. It might not have looked like anything we experience today, but that doesn't mean it wasn't consciousness. We've inherited a false perception of animals from ancient Western philosophers, who did not think much of animals or whether they're conscious or not. Perhaps it's time for us to adjust our moral compass and realize that all over the planet, animals large and small are constantly generating vivid experiences that bear some resemblance to our own.